Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this tutorial we're going to have a look at how to make curved windows with internal details using the spin tool. So in our last video we had a look at how to make this window using the shear tool, a really fun tool that allows you to make these 90 degree turns with relatively complex geometry nice and easily, and it doesn't have to be 90 degrees, it could be less than that. Either way, the shear tool makes that a lot easier. If you haven't watched that video, there is a link in the description, but it's not mandatory for you to be able to understand what's going on in today's video. So we're gonna be working on a different window section today, and we've got relatively similar properties. I haven't done the damage to this wall yet. And we've got some bits that are hidden. For example, I've hidden the window ledge that's gonna be there. And we've got a slightly larger opening because we're going to make a more curved window frame, something that suits a bit more of a Gothic style to it. And I've got my same profile here. So we're gonna use the same profile as we did in the other window. And again, you can make this profile anything you want. And again, we did that in the last video and you can check that out from the link in the description. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to move this up a little bit. So I'm going to make sure I'm in face mode. I'm going to select that face and I'm going to just press G and Z. My apologies again, I'm still using this rather rubbishy version of screencast keys. I mean, it's better than nothing, but the screencast keys don't seem to be working for me in Blender 3.1. And we could do something here trying to follow a curve to make this more arc shape, but that's a little bit annoying and there's actually a quicker tool that's going to allow us to be a little bit more exact in that and it's going to be nice and quick. So I'm going to go into side view by clicking here on the gimbal and I'm going to scroll down here and go to this spin tool. Now this is really useful. You can use this for making things like pipes. I'm going to be honest, pipes would be one of the things where I would actually just use a curve. And we've looked at how to make pipes and handles in a previous video. Again, there's a link in the description if you want to have a look at that. But for this, where we've got a very complex geometry, the spin tool is absolutely fantastic. I just wanna go through how that works and then talk through some practical applications of this. So, back into side view. And the most important thing about the spin tool is it works off a face. So I've still got this face selected and it uses the cursor as an object to spin around. So I need my cursor in a better position than this. And generally you want to have your cursor in line with this face on the axis that you want to spin it round. So for example, if we think of this as a rotation, I'm facing the Y axis or along the Y axis and I want to rotate round in the way that my mouse is going. So I need to have it in line facing this direction. So a couple of ways of doing that. First, if I move back up, we can just use the cursor tool here but that's some extra clicks that we don't need and I want to be where the spin tool is. So you can actually just move your mouse and click the shift button and then right click on your mouse, not left click, right click and it moves the cursor to where you want it to be. Now at this point I just click the spin tool and I've got some options. Normally I think it automatically starts in the Z axis. Uh, it might be different for you, but if I move you can see it's trying to spin it around the Z axis. We've got that in blue on the gimbal and it's blue here to make that really clear. And we want to spin around the Y axis Again, Y axis here, so I'm gonna to click to Y and it's gone green to say that we're doing that. Then all I do is I just click, it doesn't matter which one of these pluses we do, I just click on it and I can start rotating round. And I can do that as much as I want. For example, if I wanted to go all the way around here to have a perfect arch, I could do that nice and easily. And for example, I could do this halfway if I wanted to do something else. And if I want to be exact with this, you'll notice the angle is on the side here. So you can see what angle you're using. To make this a bit easier, you can press the control key and that will bring up this set of five degree increments. And I could, for example, take that exactly to 90 or exactly to 180 or whatever else I wanted. Now, at the moment, this isn't what I want. I actually want a more pointed arch going to the top. So I'm gonna press Control and Z and make that happen. So the first thing I want to do is if I want this to have almost a wider arc to it, I could do this in a few ways. First thing I could do is just do something like that and then have the rest of the window being straight, but I don't think that's very good. So what I need to do is actually do a little bit of trial and error and move the cursor further away from the object. For example, let's try somewhere about there. So again, that was just shift and the right mouse button. And then I can give that another go and see where that comes out. And actually, that looks pretty good. I might actually have it a little bit lower down. So again, I'm gonna control and Z, come a little bit closer, shift and right click. And let's have a look at that. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. 
and don't worry we're going to deal with this window sort of extra bit here i've done that on purpose we've still got the cutter being active here so i can cut that bit or boolean that out in a second so i've got that there and this is what i want it to look like now over here i've got the number of steps and obviously i can move that down I have less steps for example here we've got one two three four five six not including where we started that's making it less smooth i want this as smooth as i can get so i'm going to bring it somewhere up to around 60 but again, you could do this in a different way. And I'm obviously using this for 3D printing and I want it to be as smooth as I can. So we've got half of our arch here. Perfectly happy with that. Gonna go back to the select box and let's sort out this window frame really quickly. And we're gonna cover how we're gonna mirror this to the other side efficiently in a way that works for me. So I'm gonna tab out into object mode, select this, which is the cutter. If I press G to move that around, we can see it's still active. And all I'm going to do is cut out the bit that we don't want. Obviously, we could use hard ops for this, but just for people that don't have hard ops, I'm going to use this using plain Blender as much as I can. So just using native things. So I'm going to shift A, bring in a cube, S to increase that in size, G. And I'm just going to press R to rotate that until I can cut out the bit of that cutter that I don't want. And I'm just going to get the cutter add modifier, click boolean, and I want a difference boolean. I'm just gonna get the dropper bottle, click on the object, hide the object, and now we've only got this bit being cut out. So nice and easy. And then all I'm gonna do is go into edit mode for vertex, click A to see what we've got, and mesh, and I'm going to use symmetrize. And now we've symmetrized that to the other side. If this isn't working, just check what you've got for the direction. For example, here I want to go from the minus X to the positive X, which has got that correct. So essentially it has taken that out. And if I go to object, I can hide that. And if I just hide this for a second, you can see that's the shape we've got underneath. So we've got half of our arch. We wanna make this so that it goes on both sides. And there's a couple of useful tricks to this. There's a lot of ways of going around this, but this is the way that I find works for me and it's easiest. So at the moment I've got this set up so this window is still centered. So if I just press shift and S, I can bring my cursor back to the origin. So shift and S back to the origin. And we want to cut the top of this arch so that we're not gonna cause ourselves any problems later and everything's gonna to go together smoothly. So I'm gonna press shift and A and normally I'd be bringing in a cube if I want to bring something to cut but I'm actually gonna bring in a plane and there are reasons for that. I'll come to that in a second. So I'm gonna bring in a plane. I'm gonna scale it up. So we've got that plane here. And then I'm going to click R and just rotate it and type in 90. Hit enter and I've got that plane. Now, the reason I'm using a plane and not a cube is that if I brought in a cube, the cube will have its origin in the center, but the bit that it would cut, so for example, if I bring in a cube, scale that up this if we start cutting it or if i move this for example there to cut this bit off now the origin isn't in the center and having that origin in the center is going to be quite useful for something we're going to do later and essentially it means that this is going to be perfectly symmetrical so that's why i find using a plane quite useful because we've got that origin dead on this side of what is going to be a cube so g and z Obviously with a cube, we could move the origin around, but I find this easier. I'm gonna go into face mode, select that face, and I'm just gonna extrude it out to essentially make a cube. But importantly, the cube has got its origin perfectly in the center of my window frame. Now there is one issue with this, which is sometimes we get the orientation the wrong way around. So I'm gonna come into here to my viewport displays, click face origin, and actually we haven't got an issue here. If I'd have just, if I just go back, if I pressed E and went the other direction, we could see that this would turn red with our face orientation turned on. So that would be a problem. Now I will say yours, if you do this, will look slightly different to mine. This is something I've done in the settings. I'll just go through that quickly because it's quite useful. I hate the way that face origins normally looks. If I go to edit and preferences and bring that down here and go to themes and 3D viewport, you've got all of these options here. And if I go down, one of them is face orientation. And you can see the face orientation should be blue. If I click on this, and move the alpha back up, 
this is what it would normally look like. So you've got this horrible everything turns blue if it's the correct orientation, and I find that really annoying. So if you don't want it to look like that, just come into your themes. As I said, 3D viewport, go down to where it says face orientation front, click on that and turn this alpha value, which is essentially how strong it is, all the way down to zero. Save preferences as normal. And what that does is it means you see everything normally except for any faces that are the wrong way around. So as I said, we didn't have an issue. If I did have an issue, all we'd be doing is inverting the normals. So I'd just go to vertex A and then I'd press shift and N to sort the normals out. So really easy to fix. Now, I'm just gonna go back to where we were. So we were here, I extruded out this way and I can see that there's not an issue. So back into object mode. Now at this point, Nice and easy, all I want to do is delete this from this. And again, I'm gonna do this like the long way around as if you haven't got ball tools on. So I'm just gonna press add modifier, Boolean, difference, and I'm gonna click on that object there. And you can see once I hide this, and I'm gonna turn the face orientation off because it does give these slight red bits around the edge, that we've now got this perfectly centered in our window frame. So now all we need to do is mirror this across so this is going to be easy, except for if I mirror it now, I'm going to apply this, add modifier, mirror. This is doing it here. I don't want that. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a pain. I want this over here, though we will do something that looks like this later. So I want it to be mirroring it around the center here. Now there's a couple of ways of doing that. So all I'm going to do is shift and S, and I'm going to move the origin of this object to where the cursor currently is because it's currently at the origin. So two cursor and now this is going to look perfect. Now just in case your origin isn't there, this is why, or you're doing this somewhere not near your origin, this is why having the plane is quite useful. If I come over here and find my plane and bring that back, what I can do is with that, because the origin is perfectly in the center here, I can just select my plane click shift and S, I can move my cursor to the selected object, which is gonna move it here, press H to hide that, and now that cursor is now in perfectly the correct place. So click that, shift and S to move the origin to the cursor, and again, that's gonna have the same effect. So at the moment that's happening on the X axis, I need to mirror this across the Z axis. So just like that, turning the X axis off. The other way we could have done this, if I just control and Z to get rid of that and get rid of that mirror modifier is, and I will move the origin back just to prove this work. So I'm just gonna press shift and S and then move the origin back to the geometry, which is gonna put it somewhere we don't want. The other thing I could do, which saves a couple of clicks, is if I just bring up my plane, is that if when I add my mirror modifier, instead of mirroring it on itself, I could just use the drop bottle to mirror it along an object. And again, I can use the plane. And again, I want this on the Z axis, but this works because my plane's origin is perfectly on the center. So that's the reason why I use a plane, not a cube. It just makes things a little bit easier. Again, you could move the origin there, but why do it when the plane's already there and you just need to extrude it? So hide that and we've got this perfectly centered in our window, making this nice interesting shape. The one last thing I want to do is make sure that this merge button is clicked. What that's doing is if I go into vertex mode, when I apply this, this is gonna make this second version of this object. And if I don't have this clicked, then the vertices that are on the same space aren't going to be merged together. And that's gonna be annoying. So we want that clicked and I'll click apply all, except for we have to tab out of object mode to do that, apply all. And then I can go back into object mode and vertex. You can see this is just one vertex. If I press G to move that around. So now I've got our window frame really quick. Obviously I've spent a bit longer going through this and explaining it but it means that you've got this nice curved shape. Now we can use exactly the same thing to do something else and to move things around. So I'm gonna go into this. I'm just gonna steal some geometry by going to face mode, select that face, shift and D. So I've got a copy of that. I'm gonna press escape so that it just goes back to where it was, though that's not particularly important. P to separate and by selection. So now if I go back into object mode, we've got this object, but then this face is an object by itself. So we've got this here, if I just move that around, we can see that's there. And all I'm gonna do is press Shift and S 
to move its origin to the geometry. So again, it's perfectly centered. And then I'm gonna press Shift and S, and I'm gonna move this object to the cursor. So we've now got that, again, perfectly dead center. I'm gonna press G and Z to move it down. You can't really see that there. In fact, I might just go into face mode and I'm gonna extrude that up, turn on our face orientation, and we can see this has actually gone the wrong way round. So I'm gonna press A, and then I can either go to mesh, normals, and recalculate outside, or I can just press shift and N, and that's sorted that out. I'm gonna turn that face orientation off. They normally wouldn't do that, but it stops those red bits at the edge. Go back into object mode, G and Z, let's bring that down to the bottom. And I'm actually gonna make this a little bit smaller because I want the internal details being a little bit smaller than the larger outside. So I'm gonna press S, bring that to somewhere about there, and let's do a similar thing. I'm gonna go face. And if I go into X-ray mode, I can see where this curve starts. So I'm actually gonna G and Z and bring that up to there. In fact, if I just turn on snapping and edge mode, I can press G, Z, and that's gonna bring it perfectly to where that is. Shift and Z to go out of X-ray mode, turn off snapping and then let's get the spin going. So again, let's guesstimate it somewhere about shift and right click there. Spin mode, let's rotate it round, tab into object mode, add modifier, mirror, and we want this on the Z axis, not the X. And that'll do. So perfectly happy with that. Now we are gonna have the problem that if we apply this, this is going to be a mess. So actually we need to do the same thing with our plane, but we've already got our plane and we've used that. So I might as well keep on using it. I'm just gonna go into vertex mode. Obviously, because my object, if I go back into object mode and edit mode, this is the side we've done. That was my poor planning. I probably should have done it on the other side, but either way, that's fine. Let's go into vertex mode, select those vertices, delete them, go into face mode, extrude that that way and then G and Z to come down. So notice we're cutting this directly. In fact, I'm just gonna S and scale that on the Z axis. So we're gonna cut this right down the center again. We know it's the center because everything's perfectly centered. And again, let's check face orientation. It's actually okay. And then I want this, add modifier, Boolean, and we want a difference, and we want to difference this but we've got a problem here. This is the wrong order. We don't want to Boolean it and then mirror it. We want to do it the other way around. So the Boolean first, then the mirror. H to hide that. And all I need to do is apply all, go into vertex mode and we can see this has been done nicely. We're not gonna have any problems with our printing here. We've got everything that's merged together correctly. So now I've got my internal details. We've got a much more interesting arch. If I find where my windowsill is, something looking a lot more gothic here and a lot more ornate using the spin tool and a lot of fun to play around with. Now at this point, it's really easy to start adding more detail to this. For example, I could just take this shift and D to duplicate it. And then I'm going to S to scale it on the Z axis. So pressing Z, I'm just going to type in minus one to rotate it. G and Z, something like there. I'm going to press S to scale that again G and Z so I could do something like that and again just cut off those extra bits uh, I am going to use hard ops for this and box cutter so D and I'm just going to use an Engon cutter for speed so something like that there 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 so I've got that so that's nice and quick and easy to do apply that so I've got one of those there. We could do the same thing, for example, Shift and D. And then we're gonna move along the X axis. So somewhere like that, G and Z. So maybe, actually no, let's leave that there. I'm just gonna scale it a little bit. G and Z to move that up. Face mode. G and Z to move those down. And again, just gonna, actually let's scale that a little bit smaller so it sort of matches with the size of the other one. Say there, cut that with box cutter. So that's fine, apply that, and then object, and I'm just gonna mirror that. 
by object. Well, let's select that middle one because it's going to be nice and easy. I only want that along the Z axis. So now we've got this. And I think that looks really nice. In fact, I might actually move G and Z that down so it looks like it joins with the other one. Something like that. So it gets really fun playing around with this. You can do a lot of really nice things relatively quickly. And again, it's just playing with those shapes and just using that spin tool and making sure you're mirroring things accurately to make these really, really nice different shapes. So I've got that there and nice gothic looking window with a lot more detail to it than what we've had on our previous ones. Now, if we move around this, there is one thing that I should just point out, and I should have realized this earlier. If I come in here and add in my face orientation, you can see here that as I move side to side, you can see this slight red outline here in the center of this object. And you'll see there's another one just here as well. And that's because I've forgotten something to do. We're looking for this just here where the mouse is. If I come in a bit further, you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, we can get this slight red thing showing up here. And that's actually because there's a problem with this. When I did the merging, or when I did the Boolean and the merging, what we forgot to do is take out something very important. If I just side move into here, and I turn the face orientation off to make this clearer, we can see we still have this face in the center. If I just isolate this, it'll make it easier to see. So if I just come back here and then move in, we can see there's a face in between this. Essentially, it's where that join was. And because when we do a Boolean, it tries to make a manifold object, that's what's caused that. So we do need to come in, go into face mode, and we need to select that, and we do need to delete it. And we only want to delete the face. And we're gonna have to do that on our other ones as well. But we need to do that so it's manifold. I will say that generally, the 3D printing toolbox will sort that out for us. For example, if I click here and then click check all, it's gonna come up with a load of errors. And we've got this non-manifold edge. And essentially this 126 is each of the edges that we've got here being an issue. And if I just click make manifold here, it's gonna delete that, check all. And we shouldn't have any of those issues there. And now if I go in, we won't have this face in the middle. So a couple of ways to solve that, either going in yourself and deleting it, or deleting it using the 3D print toolbox. As always, I hope you've enjoyed this. Obviously, from this point, I'd merge this together and this would be relatively easy to print out. These curve shapes are actually quite useful for Windows when 3D printing because they're going to print a lot more easily because they don't have spaces that are going to be directly adjacent to the printer bed. So this is always quite a nice thing and it does look more architecturally interesting. So a total double win there. As always, if you've enjoyed the video, please do like or subscribe to the channel and drop a comment in the comment section if you've got any questions or any places where you can see you using this for something similar, maybe not even for a window, you might want to use it for something else. And in our next video, I'm gonna continue on with this theme of using the spin tool, but I'm gonna have a look at how to use it a little bit more precisely if we want to do things for some very specific sort of measurements. And for that, there are a few tips and tricks that do make this much, much easier and faster to do. So if you've subscribed, you're obviously gonna get alerted to that another reason to subscribe if you haven't.